Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Debbie Fawcett, and I believe you all can see our screen. So you know that you are in the correct place for our Tuesdays for Teachers webinar, and you can see the title, Credly, and the GED credential. Employment is a click away. Learn more about accessing the skills-based landscape. You are in the correct area. Please let us give our friends another minute or two as we are admitting people from the lobby so that we all have the opportunity to see the same information. Go to the next slide. And who would do that? There. While we are letting people in to, from the lobby, please remember before we get started, uh, we all try to be so mindful and to be good participants. Let's make sure that unless you are speaking or saying something, we will have you on mute. Keep your sound and video muted. Uh, this will stop all of our background noise. Please use the chat function to ask your questions. We will have someone monitoring and looking for that while you while we're uh, presenting. Uh, and at some point we'll take a break and we will answer those questions. Um, also, uh, just be mindful that it is being recorded and you know that because you had to click on a button and accept the fact that you knew the meeting was being recorded. So at this time, with about uh, three minutes into our 2.30, I'm in central time, I apologize, start time, I think we should go ahead and get started. Next slide. So we will say welcome. I said that once and I am Debbie Fawcett, Senior Director with GED Testing Service. And uh, my colleague Susan Pittman is not with us today, but uh, we are very fortunate to have Pat Leonard, who is with Credly, and you can see her title there below, and my colleague Jane Bledsoe with GED Testing Service to guide us through some information that I think is going to be beneficial to us as we are always looking for ways to better improve how we serve our students. And we certainly certainly believe our partners at Credly are a very integral part of that. With that, I would like to ask Jane if she would like to say anything or Pat by the way of introduction. Next. No, I think we're ready to go. Well, let's go then, Pat. Thank you very much. I will be silent and off camera. Thank you so much. And Jane, I think you're starting us off, right? And you're on mute, Jane, just FYI. Sorry about that, everyone. Hello, Jane Bledsoe here, and I, I'll get back to the right screen here in just a second. We're using Teams for the first time on this call, and so it's been a little clunky. Um, so let me just get back to our slides. All right. Can everybody see that OK? Pat, does that look all right? Yep. Fantastic. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for this session. This is a session that has been asked for many times since last fall, the first time that we started talking about workforce skills. And um, GED, as you all may know, has become part of the workforce skills area at Pearson. And along with that, what we're able to do is really connect the GED learner experience to a lot more resources. So, you know, GED, we've always said that GED is about more than the test. Well, now for sure it is because we can take learners and earners so many new directions because of our, our relationship with credit um, with accelerated pathways and many other things in the workforce skills portfolio. Today we're going to talk about Credly, which was actually an acquisition of Pearson's about a year ago, but we've been working with Credly all along um, because we know that it is such an important part of the landscape in terms of employment um, for those who finish their GEDs and frankly for some of those who don't. 
finish. Um, but it can also be part of your future as teachers. And so, um, you know, ask your questions today about how Credly can actually benefit your career as well. Um, so that's that's part of what we will do today, as well as mostly talking about your students and how um, they can access Credly, what, what it can do for them. So we are going to start with um, what what is Credly, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about how our learners, our GED learners, access Credly. We've got some new things in place for them to get a badge immediately upon um, passing their fourth test and or getting College Ready and College Ready Plus credit. So we're going to show you some of those screenshots of what their experience is like. But the bulk of the day today will be spent with Pat Leonard, who's going to walk us through all of the um, the benefits of Credly for our students um, in terms of badging for employment and for education opportunities. And then we have a resource or two at the end for you. But please make sure that you're using the chat and asking questions as we go. Caitlin's going to keep an eye on that for us. Debbie's going to keep an eye on some of those questions, answer them as we go. And we should have time at the end as well. So what do we mean when we say um, the GED is more than just a test? Uh, as I mentioned, workforce skills vision is really to help all of our students have a lifelong learning experience. Opportunities that really take them from GED to their next goal in life. And that could be school, but it might be employment. Um, and it might be more credentials, frankly. So through Workforce Skills, we have access to lots and lots of resources that can help students find affordable answers, free things they can do, um, transfer credit efficiencies, uh, learner support services, stackable credentials, and again, employability, which will be our focus today. We, at the end of the year, um, we were able to put a few things in place on the GED.com dashboard for candidates that really makes the whole Credly experience much more seamless for them. So a few bullets here on what we've done most recently. When a student receives their scores, particularly if they're in that um, College Ready or College Ready Plus credit, or if they've passed all four tests, they immediately get notification about that and they can pick up their badge immediately at that point. So it's it's an immediate uh, reaction. We do an automatic send to Credly. They post the badge as soon as we get the student's score. But the student has to take a step. And what they have to do is they have to go to Credly and accept that badge. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what the stats are telling us. Um, it's not as good as we think it can be. And um, maybe that's because we have to do a much better job of articulating the value proposition, which is also what we've been working on. From a notification standpoint on GED.com, I'll show you the screens that they get when they receive their score and then they see the benefit that they can get from Credly at the same time. If they click on that particular notification on their dashboard on GED.com, it'll take them directly to Credly to accept that badge. Um, and so that's pretty cool. Um, it's pretty seamless and we think it should be super easy. And from here, the acceptance rate really should go up. We do also send an email notification. Now we know that students don't always check their emails, so the email notification doesn't hit everyone, um, but we, we sure wanna give them another try at uh, getting in there, getting into Credly, noticing that they have a badge and using it. Um, and today you're gonna find out why it's just so very important that they do go forward and accept it. The first screen I'm showing you right now is about um, the candidate experience on GED.com. I have blown up this middle section because I want you to see the language and um, have a chance to you know, see that we're trying to present the student with the immediate benefit of, of accepting their badge. So um, on the page where you find out that you passed your test, you can also see you have a GED digital badge waiting for you. And I've circled the get the GED badge because if they click on that, it takes them straight into Credly, where all they need to do then is create their account and accept their badge. It's very quick, very easy, very painless. But if they don't know what a Credly badge is, 
then we want to send them through a learn more experience. So we're going to show you some screenshots on that today too, just to give it relevance for the student immediately. If the student earned a college ready or college ready plus credit, they get this email. Um, so you'll see that it says here you earned this badge. You have to create your Credly account, but it's not a, a, a huge barrier um, in terms of creating that account. It's just name and email, I think. Super simple. And it, it tells them that um, they can share that achievement with others immediately uh, and really encourages them to claim the badge. Tells them a little bit about Credly at the bottom, but we go into much greater detail in the learn more section on the GED.com pages. So here is a quick snapshot of the learn more page on GED.com, the top half of the page where it says, what is a digital badge? Um, and once, you know, it's talking about once you pass a test with that college ready or college ready plus credit, or you earn your GED, you're awarded a badge. Your badges can be shared and verified online easily. Um, we're, you know, seeing, and Pat will talk more about this, we're seeing that there's the skills that are behind the badge is what the employers are looking for. What can a candidate do with a GED? And what kind of skills does that translate into in the job market? So um, that's the exciting part of this is it's not just a badge. Behind it is all of the credentials, all of the things that this means for the student and for those employers looking for them. In the lower half of the page on Learn More, um, you can see that there's a few more things that we're suggesting they can do. Um, with a badge, you can share it on social media, on Facebook, on Twitter, on your social media platforms. You can stand out, most importantly, to colleges and to employers. And this is really where we think um, people will be much more engaging with the badge, um, knowing that it gets them to employment situations. And um, there's also this piece about job insights based on your skills. So I think Pat will talk a little bit more about that today. Um, at the bottom of the Learn More page, you'll see how to accept your badge. You get an email, you click the activation, you create your Credly account, you accept your badge. Pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> This is what the Credly dashboard page actually looks like. So it'll show the student their Credly badge right up front, the one that they've just earned, and they can simply click share and then share it with whomever they please. Um, from below that, you will see additional badges that you may want to earn um, from GED testing service. In this case, is one of our employees. So um, he could earn a GED content specialist badge. He could earn a GED trainer badge, but it also brings in some of the skill badges as well. Um, it tells him on this page that he has three badges already. He's got 26 skills he's shared once um, and that there've been three views of his profile so far. So this is an ongoing um, kind of snapshot of everything going on with your particular profile and who's looking at it. Now here are the badge stats. Um, you will see on the left hand side that since January of last year, about 150,000 GED badges have been delivered to our students basically or put in, in the Credly dashboard. But on the right hand side, you can see that we have a pretty low acceptance rate, only 20 percent, 19, 20 percent of students are actually accepting them. You'll see that the Credly average is 67 percent. So we have a long way to go. Um, in terms of share rate, that means how many times are uh, candidates not only accepting that badge, but then sharing it on with others, 12 percent. So th these aren't stellar stats, and I think we can do a whole lot better once students realize just what value is in it for them. So that's the whole purpose of our conversation today. And at this point, Pat, I will um, stop sharing my screen and let you take it from here. All right. I think you're still on mute, Pat. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. I'm going to ask you to go ahead and share your screen again. Let's let's okay. keep um, uh, going through what you have. 
uh, there and then and then I'll break away from that and then we'll dive directly into an actual badge. And let's let some folks in. There we go. So the whole point about um, and just to to um, uh, reinforce understanding across the board here, what is a digital badge? Why is why is this becoming a, a point of conversation more and more, not only for employers, but also for the benefit of those individuals who have earned and completed um, uh, something that is recognition worthy in such form that it is issued in a digital credential. A good part of this is being able to translate that learner outcome into something that becomes essentially career currency for your students. So this now uh, helps them talk about the experience that they've successfully completed and specifically the skills that they now have mastered and are now armed to be able to go and seek opportunities, whether that's employment opportunities or further education opportunities. So let's go to the next page, Jane. So a digital credential is something that is, um, it's trusted. It's not something that's self-reported by someone who may post whatever they would like to on that work of fiction known as LinkedIn. Um, if anyone who's on, uh, uh, this um, uh, webinar who uh, is from the state of New York and knows some of the challenges of the recently elected uh, Republican senator where he has fabricated huge amounts of his experience and his background. I, I don't even have to do marketing. I mean, this is a perfect case point in terms of trust, but verify whether or not someone actually has completed the learning experience and learned the skills that they're representing that they've mastered not only because they say it, who else says that? And that's a good part in terms of this being a trusted source. So someone is not just saying that they've earned a GED, it's GED verifying the fact that they have actually successfully completed and earned this or any one of the other credentials that, GE, that, are, um, that are a GED credential issued, some with college credit you know, across the board. Skills transparency. Very different from issuing a piece of paper with one line on it that says, congratulations, you've earned, earned your GED, and that's it. It doesn't help that student, that adult learner, tell their story about what they know and what can they now do. Again, says who. So that skills transparency about being able to say, sure, I got my GED, but specifically, what did you have to do? What did you learn in order to be able to receive this award? This helps uh, the individual who earn this, earns this credential tell their story until such time as it becomes their language. Remember, for all of us and uh, you, you know, for the educators who are and the administrators who are on this uh, webinar, um, the, the language of skills and competencies and learning accomplishments and outcomes, that's second language for all of us. That is a completely foreign language for our adult students who go through and complete a GED. So the detail that's within a digital credential, that metadata, all of that descriptive information, essentially helps that individual be more confident about being able to communicate what skills that they've mastered and helps them use this language appropriately and accurately until such time as it becomes their own. Because this is a new uh, way for them to signal their capabilities that they really haven't had before. So that's a key part about that skill transparency. I'm gonna show in a moment that ability to be able to connect directly to jobs. Um, where because the world of work is really pivoting towards a skills-based um, taxonomy, a skills-based language, um, this enables your students upon earning this to be able to speak that language because the, the specific skills that are recognized as part of the GED experience are called out in the skill tags that are within the metadata in a badge. Let's go to the next page. 
So how does this thing all work? And Jane, you did a great job in terms of kind of walking through what that workflow process is. But the um, a little further detail in terms of this is the individual completes that learning experience and we issue that uh, credential per person. It's ready, uh, ready to be claimed by that student. You remember that acceptance rate that we know that we want to drive to be higher? That's what that's uh, that step of that person coming to creating an account and accessing or going through now the GED portal and be able to access directly from there. You know, if you're if we're coaching our individuals to use that GED portal as their source of truth for everything that's going on vis-a-vis -vis their, their process that they're going through to get a GED, the improvement that we've made is embedding access to that earned criteria, that earned credential rather, directly in that same environment that we've just been training them on how to, be, on, to go to. So in addition to them getting a separate email directly from Credly saying, hey, congratulations, you've earned a badge, access to that badge is also now embedded directly in that user experience on the GED portal. So once that person accepts their badge, they now have a dashboard. And it's on that dashboard that they can begin to start earning their industry recognized kind of credentials. Maybe they're taking the free uh, Grow with Google certificate or maybe Microsoft training for basic Microsoft um, uh, skill sets uh, or what have you. Any of those kind of employer valued signals about certificates and certifications usually are issued on the Credly platform. Um, there's a little bit at the very end of this deck which talks about Credly, but uh, I can tell you in advance, um, there are over 66 million digital credentials on the Credly platform, over 4,000 issuing organizations, and they run the gamut from education institutions, training providers, employers, and associations and certification bodies. So if it's worth earning, it's more than likely being issued on the Credly platform. That's the reason why this is so important to start your adult learners off on their career with this career currency of a GED as the beginning of their journey of beginning to earn those kind of credentials that will further their employment and their career. So once they've earned that, then they can be able to connect to a current, they can share it with a current employer. They can look for a new employer. Um, they can use this as um, in a transcript, and I'll share that as well to be able to um, add this to their portfolio of what their application is for continuing on into, in, uh, into a higher education uh, degree. So that's the workflow for your earners of what they're going through. Let's go to the next page. So there are many things that can be done now with this digital credential, and, I've, and I uh, pulled out some screenshots that are here. And by the way, this uh, webinar, the deck, this deck, um, is available to you all to be able to use um, afterwards. If you're looking to be able to use this to explain what is a digital credential, what is a GED credential, um, to not only your students, but also to administrators and other uh, folks who are organizing programs wherever you may be, please feel free to use this deck and there's contact information in the end if we can help answer any other questions. So in a digital credential that's issued, as you can see the skill that's called out for this uh, GED test on math, math reasoning, as a skill, the student need only connect, uh, click on that particular skill, and it will open up um, information in terms of how many jobs currently are listing math as a required or desired competency or skill in the job posting that they're actively listing. We work with a company called uh, Gartner Group who have this product called Talent Neuron, which at any point in time, uh, about every eight hours, it refreshes globally all this information. If your students, and I'll show you this in a moment, if students want to go in and change the location, they're looking for jobs that are in Brazil or they're looking for things in Canada or Australia or anywhere else in the world where they may be or want to go, to be able to see what kind of jobs are looking for these skills, they can be able to search worldwide just by changing the country selection that's right now showing US. And every one of those postings will click you directly down into an actual open job. 
If a student goes through and we'll see this live when I take you through, I may light on a job that is that says it's no longer available. That means that it was just literally taken down within the last eight hours. It's that current in terms of connecting your students to employment opportunity. So if your your students are saying I quote unquote only have a GED, who cares and so what? Here's your response to be able to tell them, look, you, this is now your career currency to connect directly to employment opportunities. Let's go to the next page. The other thing that they can be able to connect to is actually using this as their um, uh, in their transcript that they would be submitting for a college application. Uh, so because this, again, is verified information, it's not just self-reported, and the student doesn't need to go back to GED to say, gee, could you confirm the fact that I actually have earned this GED because I'd like to apply to this particular college? All of that access and the power to share it is all within the student's hands. They get to be their own HR department of one, if you will, uh, to advocate for their skills, but they're verified by somebody else. I'll show you live in terms of how to be able to, to um, look at that transcript in just a moment. But you can see that the transcript will actually call out, should that credential carry recommended or endorsed college credit, as the GED credentials do, it will actually show the endorsement from ACE, the American Council on Education, and it'll communicate how many credit hours this is worth, what level this is, and in what discipline or topic area. So that's how that can connect directly for education. Let's go to the next page. And again, this is empowering your students, your graduates, to be able to advocate for themselves. So on that credential is a share button that then opens up options for them to be able to actually, with one click, publish their credential directly into their uh, LinkedIn profile or Twitter or Facebook. Um, they can publish their credential, either send it by email directly to a potential employer um, or to uh, a future employer if they'd like to be able to, to uh, share that information. They could download the image of the badge or actually they could go in and print. So actually I'm seeing that this one doesn't show the print function. I'll have to check into that. Um, but uh, the, if the student wants to actually print the actual certificate, they can be able to do that as well. Let's go to the next page. So here at a top level for, for you as uh, an administrator, as, a, a, as an educator, to be able to talk about, you know, why is this important to use digital credentials to communicate your skill sets? Um, first of all, it you know, will further be able to increase the demand for this program and awareness of what does it mean to be GED certified. Um, adding that market value, that direct connection to employment or ease to be able to apply for education opportunities. That's a connecting the folks to those kind of opportunities. And it's building a, a brand identity, certainly for GED, but most importantly, this is building the brand identity of your students. You know, if they don't think that they need to brand themselves, that should be part of a conversation as well, because they're now going out there and representing themselves. What's their personal brand? What's their digital brand? You know, take down all those uh, kind of things that really shouldn't be on Facebook or those Twitter posts that are probably not smart if you're uh, going after and looking to be able to put yourself forward as a, uh, as a potential employee. All of that kind of coaching that usually does occur at high school and at colleges to be able to help people identify how do they digitally show up in social media and what have you. Now having a digital credential is probably one of the best positive social media assets that your adult learners have that they can be able to share whenever, with whomever, as often as where they think um, it appropriate. So let's go to the next page. So why all the hubbub about digital credentials? You know, um, as I said, it's it's a uh, uh, Credly has grown exponentially over the last four years, and not solely because of the pandemic, um, where so many programs pivoted to online and people were looking to be able to share verified proof that they completed that program. But rather, this is what's happening in the world of work. 
employers are now changing job postings so that they are skills based. They're no longer saying, looking, I'm looking for three to five years of experience and use that as a proxy for a presumption of what skills that you should have if you've done a particular job for three to five years. What they're looking for is that and they're calling out the specific skills of, look, we're looking for three to five years of experience and we're looking for skills as um, in Adobe or as a web developer or as a supply chain manager or something else like that, because those are the specific skills that they now know are the arbiter in terms of whether or not someone is a great fit for that job or not. So as the employment community is now pivoting to this language of skills, you need to help your students make that pivot as well. And that's the reason why it's so important to point out those skills that are tagged within the GED credential itself. Also, the demographic we're talking about, you know, um, millenn you know that millennial population uh, broadly shouldered um, makes up the majority of the workforce right now. And that uh, population, if they're, you know, they are looking for ongoing professional development and they are expecting to be recognized for it when they accomplish it. So that's one of the other reasons why digital credentials have grown in importance, not solely because they're a great signal of your career currency, but also because it's fulfilling and engaging employees in recognizing their ongoing learning. We hear a lot about DEI, about diversity, equity, and inclusion. And as this world of work pivots to talk about skills, you're leading now with a discussion about what this person's skill set is, not where are they located, where did they go to school, or how do you spell their name? So being able to help that pivot towards a skills-based economy and skills-based hiring where DEI is included, that's another driver in terms of the interest of skills-based credentials. And again, you know, more and more organizations, employers are pivoting because they are struggling to be able to find the right people with the right skills. And this is a great way to be able to package those, those signals of those skills that they value. Let's go to the next page. You'll see uh, a GED is an important kind of credential. It's a credential that, um, dare I say, it is validation. It is based on measure of learning. It actually, you had to go through an assessment. Dare I say, you know, also the highest end is certification, meaning that someone has actually had to go through a proctored exam, um, a high stakes assessment of some variety. Um, you'll also see digital credentials that are out there that signal learning, which could be just completion of a course with no assessment or no challenge, or it could be just an experience of someone completing a hackathon or um, uh, you know, earning the President's Club for sales performance or what have you. But as you're talking about and you're seeing more and more digital credentials that are posted on LinkedIn and Twitter and Facebook, you'll see this variety of the kind of digital credentials that are being sent out there. And this is what they mean. All right, let's go to the next page. And the, uh, this is just a little bit of information in terms of, of uh, the impact of digital credentials as they've been uh, been shared. These are this and the next page speak to um, a couple of case studies where education institutions are seeing the difference and the impact of starting to issue digital credentials um, for their programs. Um, so you could be able to use those as use cases. Um, but at this point, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take over uh, sharing, um, if I may. OK. So let's see if our if our pivot works well here. OK, can you all see my screen? Jane, you got it? OK, got it. Yep. Great. So these are all 12 of the digital credentials that GED issues. So as you can see, it's the summative one which calls out the successful completion of the four core tests that need to be completed in order to be able to earn the master GED credential. But you can see that there are recognition of those respective four kind of programs because each of them calls out a particular 
competency or skill set that is important to employers, as well as some of them do carry that designation because they carry college credit. So, for example, um, this reasoning uh, credential identifies what did someone have to do. It describes the credential itself. This is all metadata. Deci describes the credential itself, what the earning criteria was that they needed to do, and it clearly communicates not only that this carries college credit, but how much college credit for what kind of level of a program. So again, all of this is helpful for someone who's earned this particular credential to be able to then communicate, what does it mean for me to have uh, received this particular award? And again, when someone is issued a credential, that means that they now have stood up a dashboard. Uh, and I you know, just recently got issued my new 2023 demo badge um, that uh, that is on my dashboard. And it gives my, um, anytime you stand up a dashboard as your students are earning more and more digital credentials, it'll start identifying what is it that um, that they've earned, how many ha that they've earned, how many skills that they've mastered within those credentials, and then how many shares that they've been posting when they've posted that information out, and how often has this been viewed? All of this is great signal, are great signals for that student to see, am I being viewed out there? I now am sharing something that is verified. Is it something that others are taking a look at and connecting me to opportunities? So if I go in and actually um, start to share, let's go into the credential that I, I had issued to me as an example of this uh, credential. Your students are going to see these kind of important tools that we covered quickly by the screenshots. So first of all, I'm going to have the ability to share this particular credential. I can post it on LinkedIn and Facebook and Twitter. I can send it by email. I can embed that uh, or use a public link to be able to drop this into a job application or to a college application. Or if I'm really proud of this and I want to be able to download it and append it to my email signature or drop it into a resume or drop it in, into any other kind of project that I want to be able to display the badge that I've earned, I can size that clickable link and be able to post it wherever I would like to. Um, for each of the other credentials, I do believe um, we've got the ability also to print, which is usually something that's on there, and we'll look into making sure that that's been added um, onto the share option that's there. So those are all the things that I can be able to do immediately. I didn't stand up my LinkedIn profile, but let's go there for a quick second. So I decided that I earned a credential, and I wanted to be able to link and publish it to my uh, LinkedIn profile. And the place whenever that is shared is going to show up down here after you know my activities and the listing of all my experiences and what have you in my education. It'll show up in the licenses and certification section. So with one click, as long as, long as I kind of identify what my URL is of my, um, the, the address is of my LinkedIn profile, it will automatically drop this information into this section. So if someone sees this particular credential and says, really, a digital badging workshop, I don't know who Future Workplace is, um, but tell me more about this, let me see. Someone who's looking at that just needs to click on that and up opens the full view of that credential, verifies the fact that indeed it was issued to me on this particular date, um, identifies a description, again, best practice of metadata in a badge, um, identifies what my um, uh, what the description is of this particular program, calls out the particular skills that I mastered and the earning criteria of what I had to do in order to be able to earn it. And if I'm unfamiliar with who this issuer is, do I trust them as a good arbiter or a good um, assessor of whether or not I've mastered these skills? Someone just needs to be able to click on that and be able to open that up. And that tells me about the Future Workplace Academy and tells me what are the digital credentials that they are issuing. So it gives me a sense of who they are as an entity um, out there in the marketplace. So this allows me to trust not only the person who's uh, putting forward the badge that they've earned, but also allows me to know and trust who the issuer is of that particular badge.
So those are all the things that I can be able to do. One of the other things that I can um, also do, in addition to all my share options here, is I can actually send a transcript. So if I want to be able to send a transcript of my credential, I can do this without having to go to a registrar's office or into a database or through a golden door to be able to password protected to be able to um, get access and ask someone else to be able to send this information. I can go ahead and send this digital uh, secure academic transcript or just a general transcript if you want to share this information. I can be able to go ahead and send that myself. I don't have to pay $15 to be able to get a transcript, um, which is often the case, and I can do it immediately and share it as many times and with whomever I choose. So all I need to do is go in here and identify, you know, lightly who it is I am so they can confirm that I'm, at, I'm actually that Pat Leonard we're talking about. And I can decide where I want to be able to send it, to whom, their email address, and I can include a little message in there as well. Um, to be able to send that uh, that information. So what gets sent is not a PDF that could be tampered with um, uh, by the individual who's sending it, but rather what gets sent to whoever I want to receive my transcript is actually a secure link to a PDF. It, so a PDF does open, but it's a link to the actual data that is sitting on my dashboard at this point in time. So it's confirming the fact that, yes, you know, I did go ahead and send it. Here's my email address if I need to be contacted along the way. Here's my profile view if someone wants to see all the other credentials on there. But I can decide which of my credentials I want to show on this transcript. So I can customize my transcript on what's sitting on my dashboard. And what gets sent is going to be the, uh, the top level description of that particular credential. And in this case, this one comes with college credit value. So it calls out specifically the recommendation and how many college credits that this is worth. If I'm a registrar and I wanna be able to say, gee, you know, tell me more about, I'm not familiar, I've been living under a rock, I'm not familiar with GED, um, and I wanna learn more about that, all I gotta do is be able to click on that actual credential and up opens that full metadata description that we saw before describing what this credential is all about, what the skills were that I mastered, what my criteria was, confirming the endorsement for college credit, and again, allows me to be able to link directly to GED if I'm unfamiliar with who the issuer of that credential is, to be able to actually see who they are and what else do they issue. So all of this verifies that information directly down to the student. And with that, I know we're just coming up to time. I'm just gonna do one real quick hop here to be able to link to show something that is um, uh, a link to actual job, uh, a job posting um, that's there. Let's, let's go into the math one because I really like the way that that one connects. So if I'm going into this one, and this was in the example that is in the deck that you all can be able to see. But great, I've earned this particular credential. What jobs are available that are listing math as a particular skill set? So this tells me right now there are over 228,000 jobs in the US. I could be able to see, again, I can change the country if I want to be able to go and look in any one of these particular countries. If I want to further refine this, and I happen to be in New Jersey, so I want to be able to see, all right, just show me those job opportunities that are located in New Jersey, and it will update to be able to say there are over 5,000 jobs specifically in New Jersey. Again, career currency, connecting your adult learners with this GED credential they've earned to jobs. This tells me what job titles are asking for math, tells me where they're located, what the salary ranges are, who the major employers are, and what the related skills are whenever math is listed. And some of the related credentials that I may want to consider earning because those may be relevant uh, for those particular jobs as well. And if I want to click directly through, let's say I, I'm living in Newark and I want to see the jobs that are just in Newark. And I'm looking into this, it's like, ooh, I'd love to go work for Calvin Klein, let me see drops me directly in, I can apply right then and there for the job. 
So there's no question about the career value that a GED credential carries because it's connecting them directly to jobs without them having to wade through. And they have an opportunity to be able to sift and sort through a whole host of things. But again, they're sifting and sorting based on the skills that they've earned, which that's the language of employers. So I'm gonna stop there, if I may, and let's, let's uh, dedicate our remaining time to some of the uh, questions that I saw kind of coming in. Hi, Pat. If this is Debbie, if uh, what I can do is start from the most recently asked, and there are about four questions I think that that would mm -hmm. be for you to address. And the first one is: Is this available in all states that have GED? Yes. If a GED has been awarded, that stu that student, that adult learner, has a digital credential waiting for them to claim. And along with that, another question earlier was. Is there a cost for students to participate? No, this is all entirely free for them. Um, it's free for them to send a transcript of it. It's free for them to stand up an account on the Credly platform, free for them to accept their badge, share it, post it, publish it, wherever they want to be able to do. All of that is entirely free. And I did understand that, but I thought it was more powerful to let you tell it to the audience. That's right. It's very good. Um, here's some others. Uh, another one was, is there a demo site for this where counselors could go and work with students and show them, you know, how they go in and get this credential? Is there a demo site? Great question. And, uh, and we've been asked that a couple of times. One of the things, step one was being able to make it easy to claim their badge um, on, the, um, on the GED portal. Um, I believe there is now a link to a short video of what is a digital credential. Um, we are just finishing doing some rebranding, actually. Um, and as soon as that's done, and that's being done this month, um, we'll be able to do a, a, a short video, much like that 10 minutes that I just spent of uh, walking through that process. We can do that for the student of saying, click here, create your account, Here's how you get your email. Now that you have a dashboard, here's how you share your credentials and publish them, access jobs, and what have you. Essentially, everything that I just ran through, we can be able to put that on a Vimeo. But just bear with us as we're waiting for the paint to dry on some new branding. Yeah. And another uh, a, a part added to this, Jane, uh, was um, if a student has their GED, where do they go to get this started? Well, I think you explained if it's current, but I think that question may have been asking how far back in people who have earned GEDs does access to this badge go? When 2017. Okay, and that's a good thing to know and mm -hmm. because they may have former students uh, that they could reach out to and make sure that they're aware. So 2017 is the benchmark. GEDs earn 2017 forward could access the, the uh, Credly system and their badges for earning the credential. Correct. Now right. we, we know that student by virtue of whatever email they shared at the time that they earned their GED. Gotcha. So that will be something important for us to call out to make sure that they're, you know, they may have changed. Um, and we all have multiple emails, right? We have work emails, yeah. personal emails, it's EDU emails. Um, so whatever email that they used at that time, that's how we're going to know that they're that right person um, for being able to claim that credential. Okay, a couple of more questions. Go ahead, Jane. I'm sorry, you I, go ahead. No, that's okay. I was just going to say that um, <clears throat> some of you on this call may be badge earners yourselves, especially if you have attended any kind of ongoing CE education, um, any training uh, that you you may be badge earners yourselves, in which case you should go to Credly and check it out because that would be a way for you to demo this to your students also. Um, and it's a good way for you, frankly, to be able to look and see what other kinds of um, skills that you're, you might be prompting from employer searches. Um, so it's, it's a really good plan for you to go and look and for your own Credly credentials. 
Thank you, Jane. Another question we have is, has there been feedback from employers regarding the badges? Oh, absolutely. Um, as I said, this is the new world of work is pivoting more towards um, the language of skills and the language of verified skills, not just self-reported skills of, you know, I say that I know how to be able to do X, Y, and Z. Really great. Who else says that you have that particular yeah. skill? Who's willing to attest to the fact that you've mastered that particular skill? Um, so employers are more and more looking for, not only because the nature of work is becoming more skill-based, but because they're finding that to end up giving them a far better hire that's fit to purpose for the particular role because now they can have a skills converse, skills based conversation with that potential employee. Is there a time limit for how long the badge is there? And I guess that means on posted on the website. Yeah. Um, a badge is available. Uh, we, we issue badges um, and have them ready to be claimed the moment that the source of truth, in this case, GED, tells us that they've met the criteria. And then we hold on to that badge until such time as the earner comes and claims it. Could be years after they've earned that credential for them to be able to come and claim it. Or if the issuer themselves has decided that they're gonna revoke the badge. I can't imagine that being ever the case in GED, uh, but that is the case in certain instances where um, certain technical uh, uh, um, skills and technical credentials where if you haven't come and claimed it after three years, frankly, that technology is probably obsolete. If you haven't already claimed it, that uh, issuer sometimes will will revoke or remove all those badges. Well, here's another one about not only GED badges, but what if they want to earn other badges? Are there additional fees to earn other types of badges through Credly. So we are not the issue, we are not the facilitator of the courses or programs or experiences that will then earn you a badge. That's education institutions or employers or or what have you. But once a student actually now has um, earned their GED and they have an account sitting on the Credly platform, um, they can absolutely go in. I'm going to just share with you real quickly here. Oops. Hang on. So once you've earned that particular credential and you've got your profile, let me go just to my, let me go to my dashboard, to my profile. If a student is in there and says, gee, you know, okay, I'm ready to be able to start developing uh, my stuff um, I would really want to be able to learn some things about uh, Adobe. All they need to do is go up into this little spyglass up here, and this will show for them 50 different choices of Adobe credentials that are available to be earned. It will show you different organizations that are issuing those particular programs. So if I want to be able to go actually to Adobe, and I can be able to see, oh, OK, here's all the various Adobe credentials that I could be able to earn. And if I want to be able to click on one of those, I can be able to see. Um, actually, we have, have uh, something new that is coming out where actually it'll say earn this badge. So if it's a public a seminar or a public program that someone can be able to just drop right in and be able to register and earn that particular credential, we're adding a button wherever that is possible to be able to go ahead and earn that credential. But they have a chance to be able to start wandering through and taking a look at anybody um, that's in there if they just want to be able to search. If they're looking for, gee, I'm interested in some of the, the programs that Coursera offers. Are any of those issued in a digital credential form? Oh, OK. I can see that there are a whole host of credentials that I could earn wow, I could go on and earn a whole host of Google badges from Coursera. So this is entirely free for the student to be able to go through, wander, and see what other kind of, what other kind of um, recognition could they earn in digital badge form. Okay. We have another question that 
says, how about states that have migrated? Basically, is this badge for those who have earned their GED? Uh, what about states uh, that have migrated to, to a competitor's test? Are these badges awarded for passage of the GED? And I guess they're wondering if there are badges ordered for states that have um, two tests, two options, such mm -hmm. as the high set. Right. So we don't yet issue the um, we're in. Uh, this is part of the conversation of us issuing a digital credential for high set. Um, it's not out there yet, but it's it's something that I um, expect to be issued soon. Um, but GED, absolutely, wherever, again, wherever a student has completed successfully a GED exam, they are issued a badge. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And other than that, unless I've missed it, I think those are all the questions and we've got some thumbs up and kudos for the excitement that this brings to the value that we offer through the testing program and what we can follow up with. So. With that, I will I will say I believe that's all the questions. So, actually, Debbie, I, I thought in the scroll I saw oh, incarcerated actually... persons and access. Yeah, I apologize, Carrie. There was in the scroll a question about how. What about corrections? And I, I thought I would let you respond to that. We know that there's always somebody who serves as their proxy um, for the the transcript and the the uh, GED credential, the transcript and their certificate or diploma, but is it possible for corrections uh, for inmates to access this credential? Great question. Because inmates don't necessarily have a, a specific email uh, designation, and that's really the, the way that we end up issuing uh, that kind of credential, um, stay tuned because we've been talking about how to be able to facilitate that through the GED portal um, where there may be some other identifiers. Uh, so long as there is any one unique identifier for that individual that could be secured, um, we're working through that process now uh, to be able to figure out how to be able to hold those credentials and make them available. So that when that incarcerated is released, uh, that individual is released, they now have access to their dashboard. So stay tuned on that one. I'll, I'll commit when uh, I'll commit to you all that that when we um, end up publishing that um, video, that kind of uh, more tightly kind of runs through what we've just covered in this hour. Um, that will come back with some commentary on that as well, because that's a very common question. And once again, and I believe you've answered this, that they are still asking about some type of tutorial to review mm -hmm. on how to use Credly, and you've said you're working on it, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing that there are two tutorials that would be helpful. One is uh, for you as educators and administrators, um, facilitators, it's kind of giving you the inside skinny of how you can be able to talk to your students about this particular um, benefit uh, that they have and how to use it. And then the other one is something short and sweet, which is really focused on the user experience, which which literally, you know, follow the bouncing ball <laughs> for your earners on what do you do next? What do you do next? What do you do next? Um, kind of a thing. So, um, my my sense is there's a there's a version and a version plus of a video that would be helpful to this team. And I love the fact that someone just found out that their son has a Credly account. <laughs> <laughs> See, we we believe in world domination. We're starting with the young ones and we're moving up. So anyway, that's great. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you so very much, Pat, for being our guest speaker this time. And um, I'm sure you will be asked to come back and talk again, especially when we um, we have even more great stats to share about the number of people who are accepting their badges on the GED side. Debbie and I are going to be watching that very carefully over this next several yes. months. Um, and we know that you guys will be our best, best source of PR for this. So please talk to your students about it. We think it's a huge benefit. Um, and thanks again very much, Pat, for your time today. You're very welcome.
And I think we have one other dish additional slide if we can get back to the deck. Sure. Let's see, I think we have to go to the very end here. Here we go. That's the one and you're looking for, right? Yeah. That is exactly the slide we're looking for. And this is very important because our, our Credly partner will definitely be there in person and speaking with you. But we have the information about the summer conference out and available. As you can read, it will be July 18th through 20th in New York. Uh, you can now sign up and register in the early bird registration. And I just, uh, just to make sure when we put in there that you could go to ged.com educators slash administrators, I just went there. The best way to get to it for me was to go to the in session blog tab on the left hand side. And if you're very linear like me, I didn't click on register. And register was where all the information is. We've listed for you the sessions that are going to be available. Uh, we are very much ahead of our schedule. We made sure our timing was correct so that what you see now is exactly what you'll see in the program when you arrive. So um, take the opportunity to start talking now. Look for the information or reach out to us. Next. And thank you all very much. A special thanks to Pat and to Jane. And uh, behind the scenes, Caitlin has been keeping everybody engaged with us here. But as we do with most Tuesdays for Teachers, if you have any questions, you can send them to me. You can also reach out to Jane and anything you need to ask of Pat, we will certainly make sure she gets the information. So I will let my colleagues say farewell and I will thank you and we will get information to you shortly about the February Tuesdays for Teachers. Pat, Jane. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Have a great afternoon, folks. Thank you so much. Thank you all.